Hey, 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 what is going on, IK Familia? It is your boy, BN, a.k.a. Mr. Kingdom Builder, and today we are going to be bringing you that good, good, goodness, talking about best practices that for you as a new player, or even if you've been playing for a while, going over some of these foundational pieces that are going to allow for you to be as efficient and hopefully as effective as you can in min-maxing your account. Now, before we get started, as always, make sure you guys sub, like, of course, ring the notification bell, and if you want to be a part of our conversation, you can join our Discord in the pinned comment or description. Now, let's start off with pretty much the first thing that you really would be doing when you're getting into Infinity Kingdom, right, is which server do you start in? And I'm going to keep this part short, but I truly believe that there is a bigger benefit overall to starting out in an older server than in a newer server. There are only a few things that you will really get out of a new server. One of those being that you're able to play from day one with other people, and you're able to level your account up with other people along a similar, if not same pace, depending, of course, on what your time investment looks like. Are you spending? Are you just completely free to play? And then beyond that, there's a few of the beginning events, things like Supreme Alliance, City Siege, just to name a few, where you will just miss out on. And those are some gems that you'll get, but part of it also depends on how high your alliance places. Right there is not, you know, and again, you, you know, you get to kind of enjoy the beginning part of, of capturing cities and doing this. And, and don't get me wrong, that is fine and dandy. I truly believe, though, that starting out at an older server just lends a lot more benefits because, one, if the idea is to progress your account and to min-max in the best way possible, why would you not choose an active older server to be a part of where you can level your account so much faster? Why? Well, when you join an older server, you'll actually get access immediately to unlocking the majority of your chronicles. And this is coming here where, yeah, you might miss out on some of these, but you're going to get basically all these rewards immediately without having to wait. That means that, for example, if you get all these green gems or resources, you can invest those into areas into your account, some of those which, in which we'll touch on later. But those can go into building upgrades, research upgrades, increasing VIP, purchasing a mortal shard, uh, philosopher stones, right, etc., some of these. Then... You're also going to be having the benefit overall of being able to, be well, not benefit, but take advantage of Alliance Tech. And let's just briefly talk about this for Alliance Tech. So you are, in short, let's say you join an alliance that is level 9, level 10, right? They're close, if not already at max. You can already be a part of an alliance that arguably has 150 people after unlocking Big Family. You can also take advantage of texts like Brothers in Arms, right? Which means that you're getting, right? It says help received is negative 1% for the time required for building, upgrading technology speedups and an additional 270. I believe this max is at 300 seconds, uh, which is, what is that, five minutes, if I can do math correctly, up to, uh, off of the time, right? That's for each help. So, uh, right, this is just something that factors into you being able to uh, go faster with your building and then your research techs. In addition, if you have high gathering tech researched, you can, your, your gathering speed can be up to 20% extra, right, for each of the resources. Your load capacities can get up to 20% extra, right, which means you can carry more now earlier on in your account's life. Your SP and your AP recovery, right, can get up to 10% increase for their, re for their regeneration. If you're working on attack, HP, defense, these are all going to raise the stats of your marches, meaning you're going to be able to attack gnomes, gnome bosses, um, and then, of course, because uh, it's increasing in general, right, you'll also be able to do, uh, do some additional gathering and, uh, on top of also being a little bit stronger if PvP is needed or even participating in things like Arena, right? There's a lot of factors that these areas will go into just from the general tab. 
Then when we get over to territory, right, you as a player, you can benefit if you join an alliance that has high tax. This just means that you're getting more tax income from the occupied cities. Lower attack costs, right, if you're attacking other enemy cities, right, especially if you want to do some honor trade and you could save some AP there. Um, in addition, if let's say you're doing things like decree, uh, cooldown or for example like minimize losses right a proportion of your fighting uh, of your troops when you're fighting within your alliance territory right are decreased so you're not taking as much damage now uh, when you fight on alliance territory so if you're fighting gnomes on alliance territory immortals attack are increased right so again these are just some of the techs that uh, from the alliance that will benefit you as a player going into an older server now let's get into some of the other areas, right, when it comes to general things that you're going to be doing in the game. So uh, buildings, right? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty easy on this. Uh, my recommendation on building order, right, most important thing here is castle, right? Castle is going to be giving you more helps, uh, even though it doesn't... Gosh, where does it save for the helps again? It's not upgrade, but you do get up to 25 helps once you get to 25. Oh, gosh, I wish it would... I'm sure it tells me that somewhere, but I've already been given helps. Okay. Anyways, yeah, essentially you get up to 25 helps at level 40, right? After you get to a certain point, um, the, help, the amount of helps you're going to get are, gonna, are going to increase for each level um, that you go up. Now, once you get your castle upgraded, right, if you're trying to min-max, right, then you would go castle... You would go Academy, and that's just because you need to be able to get into Academy text pretty early. And then Wishing Fountain is what I like to go next, and that's just because you get the free praise here from being able, right? So, you know, again, when you are when you have this at 40, which is max level, you can then do up to 20 free attempts. You could see 160k resources, which times that by 10, 1.6, 3.2 mil that you get a day just from these and that's only if you just do up to the free 20 attempts and that's minimum you can also crit on hitting praise where you can get to times two up to times five so again that's really good and if you get up to the times five right what's that five you're looking at eight hundred thousand resources right just for one prey out of the 20 so again it's pretty good um you might average two to three uh, out of 20 attempts um i would say it's probably a good give or take uh, then after you get done upgrading Academy and Wishing Fountain, the next thing you're going to want to immediately uh, go into upgrading is going to be your resource building. So you would go gold is always the order, right? So you want to max dwellings. Then you would go iron for smeltery, smeltery, and then uh, if that's even how you say it, and then quarry for stone, lumber for wood, and then your farm for food, right? And then as you're kind of upgrading other things, you can do that passively. Now, let's say you do decide that you're like, you know what, I don't mind spending a few dollars. My recommendation would be getting the Head Start Bundle, which allows for you to get a third or a, uh, unlock a permanent second builder. Now, the Head Start Bundle here, you're not going to find, but essentially it's going to be here on the left side of the screen. When you go in, it'll say Head Start. It's a $5 pack, and it will unlock a second building queue. You can also use things such as contracts, which if I have one, here we go. Uh, there's contract builders. You'll get these as you progress throughout the game, in addition to being able to purchase these as well uh, from your alliance shop. Eventually, once you absolutely need them, right, for 1,800 alliance credits. And usually you, you're going to gain more than that if you have a, an active alliance uh, on a per day basis. So you don't necessarily have to worry about that, but it could give you up to three building queues uh, at max. So again, it's just nice if you're willing to spend the five bucks, even if you only ever spend five bucks in the game, I still think it is a big win and it's arguably the most important thing to spend your first five dollars on. Next, after buildings, let's talk about research briefly. So research, right, what do you upgrade? Now, for those of you who've played Kingdom Builders, some of this is going to be pretty standard, right? Most of us know that if you want to min-max, you have to immediately go for getting max building right, which is here at 30%, and then you eventually need to get rapid progress, which is here on the production tree, and this is going to give you plus 30%, right, you can see I actually have just maxed these, so I am giddy like a school girl in Japan that does not know what to do with herself after her new anime idol uh, just showed up at school. Now, after you end up doing that for production, right, the focus here is always production, right, so you want to level up everything here in production up to rapid progress or i would say arguably up to uh the loads which is the burden text here after rapid progress then as you go right so as you increase 
an academy level, you always come back to production, right? Even if you're going into somewhere else, right? So if you're at 10, you've done everything at your academy level 10, you've done everything in production. Okay, now you can start going into the next trees. When you go to academy 11, go right back to production, level everything up that you can up to up to the burden text, and then you can go back. This is so when you this is so you're always prepared to immediately level up speedy construction or immediately level up or start the next level ups to eventually get to rapid progress just that much faster. Then after production, my recommendation here for the most part, when you're starting out, I would say you want to go immortal tree because you want to level up veteran, which is going to give you more combat experience earned by immortals. So that's something that I think is good. However, it also allows for you to get to boosting consumption, which I think is just more important really than veteran uh, because at late game right now, for the most part, players are still using their primary march until they can get their second uh, additional marches up, right, to where they can start attacking level 31 gnomes, uh, which is where you start getting at minimum the epic gear uh, for your immortals. So even in a situation where I'm at now with my main march, right, I still haven't even used my second march because I'm just not able to at least get up to uh, the power that they need to be at to start attacking level 31 known so I can just basically constantly farm epic gear and we'll talk about marches here in a moment but boosting consumption is important because this reduces the amount of gold it costs to upgrade your immortal so you go here to your immortals tab you'll see your list of immortals when we go here to the top right you'll see this number shield right this is your boost level this is important because it's another additional area that will allow to increase your immortal stats. However, once you get all six pieces, which we'll talk about that in a moment, you then do the one tap activate, but it costs gold for this, which is again, why we focus production buildings in that order. In addition to why we recommend you focusing on this tree going second, so you can get to boosting consumption. Outstanding talent's pretty good, uh, but for the most part, boosted consumption is important. Then we're going to go into the troop tree. Um, superhuman speed, uh, which is the last one here for marching speed. This is what you want to focus on next after you're done kind of getting as far as you can into the boosting consumption. Then you go marching speed. And then what you really want to try and get to is abundant supplies. This reduces your action point cost when you are sending your march out. Right, so the amount of, that you're consuming. This basically lowers your AP costs and will allow for you to use more AP overall. So you can make the argument that really abundant supplies probably is the next most important tech that you're really going to want to be doing. So you can kind of make the call here. Again, I like going boosting consumption because I think it's important, but I also think that if you want to try and reduce, and this is just more for later once you get to end game, right? It's going to be difficult to sustain once you get to T4, or even more so T5. And this is like for the free to play. So my value, even though I think reducing AP is by far way, probably the second, if not third most important tech after speedy construction and rapid progress, I still think going immortal early for boosting consumption is going to give you as a free to play, right, more reduction on resource reserves outside of your action points. Um, but again, if you really, if you're one of those types of people, this is why I give an asterisk here. If you're one of those types of people who you value AP a little bit more than what I've explained, you're more than welcome to kind of go troops over immortals, right? Then you would go production troops, immortals. Um, if you don't want to go production, immortal troops, um, then you can do that. Next, lastly, I would say is defense um, that you can focus on. Really, the big thing here is just trying to get to T2 and then, you know, eventually T, uh, T3 when you can. I think that's good enough. Uh, when you're coming to defense, but again, you're probably going to work on this last, so it's not going to be that big of a deal, I would say. Next is going to be Well of Time. This is connected to the boosts that we talked about before, and we're going to touch a little bit here on Immortals, and then we'll dive into Lord Talon. So, next, Well of Time. You're going to go here to the bottom right corner of your screen, and then you're going to go over here to Well of Time. Now, Well of Time is essentially, think of it like Expedition, right? If you've played other Kingdom Builders, this is just another mini game that you can use with your marches, and you're pretty much just going to go up against areas here, and you're going to attack, and I'll just give you an example here if I can do one that I haven't done yet. Okay, here, so watch. We'll do 11-5. We're going to challenge this. I'll go with... Ooh, it's refreshing. Okay, here, let's do a lower one just so I can have a higher chance of winning. <laughs> just to give an example. Uh, okay, here, here, we'll just do 10-6. Let's challenge 10-6, right? And so you're going to do these on a daily basis when you start out. 
the important part is that you want to keep coming back to well of time whether you do it daily every other day because the focus here is that you're going to want to try and beat these as as fast as you can getting to as high as you can because the higher you get on these you're going to get additional rewards from them in addition to it is also going to allow for you to get materials that is going to be important when it comes to boosting that or again focusing that that level boost on your immortals that is going to be extremely important especially if you want to try and level your mortals as quickly or as fast as you possibly can. All right, awesome. So we finished. I'll give you an example and show you here what you win at the end. I guess it would have been faster. We do a very low level, right? But you'll see here. You get some EXP scrolls, which is great because it focuses on being able to level up your number here. And then you also get some materials from attacking as well. Right, and I'll show you an example of this. So let's go over to our immortals. Let's just use one. There's a couple areas here that you're going to focus on, right? You have your boost level that we talked about. That comes from materials and well of time. You have your skills, which is your primary. This is being leveled up from purple crystals. We'll get to that in a moment. Then you have your experience tomes that we talked about. You can get this from well of time. You can also get this from some seasonal events slash general events. And you can get this from attacking gnomes as well, which is kind of your general PvE um, well, I, I guess I would just say PvE units that are on the map. Uh, you also can focus on leveling your gear. You also get these from gnomes as well. Um, and then you have additional skills, which we'll talk about briefly in a moment. So let's go ahead and we'll talk about, uh, again, ways to level up your immortals, right? which there is going to be, as we just said, we'll take a look at a gnome here. If I can find one. Cool. So here's a gnome, right? You get a certain amount of EXP. For attacking, you're going to get some enchant stones. Now, these are used to upgrade equipment that we just showed you on the Immortal. You also have a chance of random drops, right, of Elite or of Epic Gear, right? And again, that starts at 31. You can see here, I can't show you, a. I don't know if there's a 30 around here, but essentially 31 is where it starts. That's just kind of what you need to know, at least when it comes to the highest tier level of gear. Now... <clears throat> the next part that we're going to touch on, right, is upgrading, or excuse me, as we did kind of showing you where you're going to get these from, your enchant stones, and I'll show you an example of those stones that you get. Let's say I wanted to upgrade this, I would go to strengthen, right, and then I would do this. Now, I'm going to give you just a brief example here. You want to go, first, first and foremost, never do the one-tap strengthen. You want to do this five levels at a time, and I'm going to show you why. So I'm just going to give you a short example. Let's say five, I'll do five. Right, you can see the power is increasing. I'll do five again. Now, when we do the last five, you'll see that you get a resonance level bonus. You can see resonance level one reach. This means when you get each of your equipment leveled up in increments of five, you will get an additional bonus on that gear outside of just the general individual level. So this is why you want to make sure that you level these five levels at a time and not do the one tap strengthen where this could go to 40 and then you're stuck at the rest of these at zero, not taking advantage of the additional bonuses. Okay. Next is going to be leveling up your skill, right? This is pretty straightforward. So you're going to end up going into your Hall of Immortals. And the short version here for Hall of Immortals is that you just want to be sure you are doing nine pools, right? So you can see here, it says 9, 10% off. What this means is that you're going to pull 10 immortal chances for the price of 9. Always do this. The only time you want to do the 1 is when you get the free attempt. For your Philosopher Shards here, you can do these. You get 5 free a, a day, but then anytime you get these individually, just do them right away. They, they, nothing comes up here that allows for you to do them all at once. You have to basically do the individual click. A little monotonous, I get it, but it is efficient. Now, or I, I should say the only way to really do it. Then, once you summon these, you would go to your Alchemy Lab. I don't know if I, I had to have some. So you go to your Alchemy Lab here, and if you want to disenchant or... Uh, I guess fil filter these down you would do that and you would gain right these uh, immortal fragments right soul shards or purple crystals depending on how you want to refer to it as and again I'm just going to do this because I'm already in a place to do this but in short you want to take advantage right and if you unlock any epics right a good feature here is to use the lock you can see I have a lot of these people locked right now what you would do here is you would click on one 
right? And this is how it would normally show. So I would go here, I'd click the lock button. And what this does is it means that I can't accidentally disenchant them. Then I would take those shards and we'll talk about the market here for a moment. I would go into the market and then, as you can see, I don't have any refreshes left today. I almost had 2K, now I'm down to 748. But you would go here, right, and this is where you can purchase shards to level up the primary skill for your immortals. You can also fish for some by just, you know, refreshing this until you find the ones you want. You can just basically, you can do anything really if you want, right? You can just uh, fish for epics and you just purchase all the epics. You can fish for ones that are in your main march only. You can fish for ones that are in your second, your two main marches only, uh, right? You can kind of do anything and everything you want. My recommendation on this is really doing it one of two ways. The way I like to do it is I, in, in short, I focus on just grabbing all the epics that I can, right? Doesn't matter what epic they are. Uh, if it's an epic immortal, which is the golds, uh, I'll always use purple shards on those. Even though it's going to take a lot longer, eventually by doing that, I, what I'm really doing is I'm min-maxing my refresh or my refresh scroll usage, right? Which is one of the reasons why I have so many. And every time people usually see me look at my market, they always ask me, why do you ha how do you have so many refresh scrolls? The other option that you can do is you can just fish for the immortals that are in your primary march. Bear in mind, the challenge when you do this, and eventually over time, as you start leveling and then you're looking for specific immortals, is that you're going to have to use more average refresh scrolls to find specific immortals or characters in order to then purchase their shards from the market. So that's just my bare heating of wisdom. In addition to that, right now let me briefly talk about, oh gosh, where are we going? Uh, next let's talk about Mysterium for a bit, and then we're going to circle back around. So for Mysterium, Right, you're going to do a lot of things here, but in short, you're just going to fight this out. This is going to allow for you to get some gold. Um, as you can see, potential gold rewards. You can see even some of the new immortals that might show up here as well. And then, after you defeat the bosses on each level, so there's three floors, or three main floors, I should say. And the fourth floor is going to allow for you to get artifacts and we'll briefly touch on that here in a little bit so in mysterium right when you defeat a boss you get a little bit more gold but you also have the chance of getting some epic immortal shards as well from them so this is a great way if you just want to come in right you want to get some usually these are healing speed ups that the chests always offer so it gives you a chance for some healing speed ups you get some gold you get to see some new immortals that will show up in certain uh, PvE marches. I want to say there's about three right now currently. And then you get a chance to get some epic shards, and then you can get some artifacts too as well. Once you get to the fourth floor, which is the Evernight Labyrinth, where you would be using two marches, and it's basically two different lanes that you'll focus on doing that from. Now let's talk about Lord Talents briefly. So in Lord Talents, right, there's a lot to, to know here, but what I will say is that when you're just starting off, my recommendation is to go development. Um, and just really focus on that. As you can see, my lower talent level is 36, very close to 37, and it's only allowing me like two more points here. And so I imagine you're gonna only have a few points, right, that you can do into another tree. But in short, if we're focusing on development, my strong recommendation here is I feel like I have pretty much picked the min math, the min max path on really development focus, which is that Right, you go massive construction for the 10% building speed. You go experience because it gives you 100% bonus XP when fighting gnomes. This is really good to use, even if you're just using this on second marches um, as well. Even if your primary march is already maxed, you could take advantage of this bonus. Then you would go increase gold production 10% because gold is arguably the most valuable resource. Here, you're going to take Divine Walker because this is increased marching speed by 50% and it reduces the AP cost to zero. You can also use this when attacking other players, so a good benefit there. Leaps and Bounds increases Academy Tech by 10%. And you can respec this if you want, right? You can go here for increased resource production after you have all your buildings down. These are things to consider as well late game. Then, safe and sound. Troops cannot die when fighting gnome units. This is such a big thing because it reduces hospital costs and bills. Then you have increased uh, training speed, which I like this a little bit more because it helps with growth talents. 
um, along with that you're not really going to be starving for resources late game in my opinion especially after you get all your buildings upgraded and then eventually when you max out academy to, uh, research next then you can do otherworldly helper this reduces the cooldown time of free summons in the hall of immortals by eight hours this means that it only takes 16 hours so it's a good benefit for not only the philosopher's stone but also for the shard refresh then here for filled warehouse increases warehouse storage by 25 percent i like this though i may end up switching and going sheltered uh for increased warehouse protection i actually think this could be a little bit more of a benefit when it comes to certain scenarios like when you get into something like a kvk but if you're in a unified server or a non-war server i would say filled warehouse could be a little bit better of an option to go with lastly glorious return doubles the rewards obtained from defeating gnome units this is really good because it means that it can also help you boost up your equipment that much faster by putting in those equipment shards or materials into those. Next, we're going to briefly talk about dragons. So dragons, in short, right, is you would really just want to focus on the dragon that you're using in your primary march just to really keep it as simple as humanly possible. So that way we're not having to do too much here. And then... Again, you're going to be, in order to get shards for your dragons, right, to level up the skills, which is domesticating, upgrading them does cost gold, just bear that in mind, you're going to go out on the map and you're going to defeat gnome bosses. And I will give you an example of one. So here's a gnome boss. And you can see that there's, well, I'll show you here better yet. <clears throat> there's four different types of gnome bosses, right? So you have Death Stinger, which is fire. You have the giant, uh, sorry, lava, uh, sorry, water is Death Stinger. Uh, giant Berserker, which is, oh God, is it? I always forget here. Metallic is earth. Lava Lurker is fire. And then this one is, uh, Giant Berserker, I believe is lightning. So yeah, fire, lightning, fire, sorry, dear God, water lightning fire earth there we go uh, and that's the order that you go in uh, now there's also wind there's shadow and holy um, those are the three additional elements that they don't currently have a boss for but you in short would attack these bosses and it would allow for you it would give you some resources along with the most important thing which is um, some of the dragon shards that you're going to use to level those up the next thing we'll touch on is AP and SP usage, which we'll briefly touch on well of time, but for the most part, um, let me start with AP here. So with AP, you're going to want to focus on draining your AP all the time. This is by far one of the most important things that you're going to do. Now, the order I like to go in with AP usage is doing gnome boss attacks, because as you saw earlier in the video, you want to make sure that you are having max chests at your treasury. And this is going to be your, tra or I should say, your trove now, as it has been renamed to. But you want to always try and have three chests here, so that way you can always have an option of which ones to choose, right, depending on the amount of time you're putting in. Do you have to step away for a while? Are you going to sleep? This way you can kind of do your six or your 12-hour chest to take advantage of the time. So again, the order you go in, as I said, is you want to go gnome bosses until you get three chests once that happens then you can go and do the gnomes right now let's briefly talk about uh skill usage even though i don't know if i can even look can i attack uh, okay this is what we're gonna do i'm gonna recall one just so i can show you 46 okay we'll just do a recall now all right so let's say i'm attacking this gnome boss let me briefly talk about lord talent skills the order I like to go in for Lord Talent skills is I like to go safe and sound, which troops do not die first. Then I'll go glorious returns. I'll get double rewards. Then I'll do experienced. <clears throat> and then after experienced, I'll do divine walker. And again, this is just focusing on, on development tree. This is not for these other additional ones that you can get in other areas, or even if you're using other options as well. Now, let's say, for example, that your primary march is in a position like mine, where even though it is a little bit higher than it is right now, just because it's gathering and I have to do a little bit of refill. Actually, here, hang on, let's see the refill now, so I can just give you a better a better example. Can I boost this? Uh, do we just want to waste the three? Eh, okay, why not? All right. So let's refresh, right? So here's at max now for me. In this situation, all my mortals are at level 40, right? So what do you do? If you want to take advantage of something like experience where you get 100 percent gain so what you do is i would still use safe and sound on my primary march but i'll use safe and sound testing how high of attacks that i can do so keep in mind you can usually attack a gnome that's a little bit higher right i was doing level 31s consistently 
Now, I was able to beat 34 with my Trents, 34 with my Bakkens, and then I was able to do 33, but not do the 34 on Rokes. Right, and these are three different immortals. They basically just give you different equipment types. And so, usually, when you're attacking these gnomes, you just kind of go in order do a Trent, do a Bakken, do a Roke, and just kind of rotate that. That's usually the best thing in a way that I recommend, unless you are hyper farming for like that last piece of equipment or a few last pieces and you just want to do nothing but attack a certain type. In short, when you are attacking, though, I like to do safe and sound first and you can test that to see how high you can go once you figure that out then just use the rest there you could still do double rewards because it doesn't matter if you're using it on your primary then once you get to max level and this is only in the exception if you have a troop that is already at max level where they everyone's 40 then for experienced use that on your second march right that's four attacks that your second march can do to take advantage even though you may not be using them until they can at least get to level 31 right or assuming until they can attack level 31 gnome bosses and win, of course. All right, that goes for AP. Now, SP is going to be for Well of Time, right? SP, the order I like just to go in, and this is in the beginning to keep it super simple, is you go top down, right? So 11.6 is the highest I've cleared at a three star, and you can only do raids for three stars or ones that you've done a, th a three star completion on at minimum. Once that happens, I would go in, I would do this. I would do raid five. Okay, cool, I got it. I'll raid another five, and then I'll just go to the next one and do the same thing over and over again, right? But you always do highest to lowest, unless, again, you are fishing for something specific. And that kind of covers AP in a very short way. Uh, next, we'll talk about, right, we did talk about gnomes, gnome bosses, and gathering, right? So gathering is pretty simple. It's always good to try and gather on your resource-occupied territory, and that is mainly because you will get bonuses from this, right? So you can see that there's different RSS zones. We're going to show this for a moment. And RSS zones, what this means is that you have, high, you have higher, you have access to higher level gnomes, gnome bosses, and RSS tiles. So if you want to be able to attack higher levels, gnomes or gnome bosses, you have to go to a higher level RSS zone. Now in short, right, we're in RSS zone four, and you can see that because it says here level three, uh, here one V for level four. So I'm here, and you can see the an example if let's just take a level seven tile, right? I get 150k on increased gathering speed from this tile just because I am here. I'll get 200 additional K gathering speed, right? Which is a little a little less than a, si a third here of your gathering speed that you can. That's still really good. I could be doing 924K, or I should say as I am, doing 924K here, right? Compared to just 724K. So again, really important to make sure that you're aware of the resource zones and you don't have to control the district or your alliance does not have to control the district for you to take advantage of just going to these zones to farm higher level gnomes, bosses, and, and gathering tiles. It's just the bonus on the RSS tiles that you won't get if you don't control the district, in addition to doing things like taking advantage of certain alliance tax as well when you're fighting gnomes and gnome bosses within a controlled district. Next is going to be VIP and green gems. So VIP and green gems, it, it's it, it's a love affair that I have. My strong belief, as you can see, I'm at VIP 15, uh, but my strong belief here is is that you should always invest your green gems into VIP. I think VIP just awards a lot of quality benefits, and the most important one here is eventually when you get to VIP 10. But we'll start with six. So when you get to six, that's when you start getting philosopher stone shards. When you get to VIP 10, that's when you start getting a full philosopher stone that you'll get daily on top of the 100 daily activity chests, which we'll talk about in a moment. You can get two shards every day just from getting to VIP 10. This means you could do two nine pools every, what is it? Two times nine? Yeah, so what, every nine days? No, because that'd be 18. Oh gosh, can I do math? Yeah, I guess it is two every, every nine days. Yeah, because at day five, you'd have 10. Gosh, math is hard. Yes, two every nine days, which is really good. Um, for you to be able to do and that's just from this along with a lot of the benefits that you get which is pretty standard for other kingdom builders as well right with your research speed your building speed um, right these are things that you know are pretty important um, along with getting some of that dwelling production which is for your gold so my recommendation is just invest vip uh, sorry invest your green gems any and all green gems you get 
into VIP. Trust me when I say, as you play for a while, you will realize how many VI how many green gems you get and how high of a VIP level you can really get it to if you focus on that. Uh, next is going to be growth missions. So that's this button here in the bottom right corner. Uh, these are growth missions. These are just general accolades that you're going to do as you normally progress, but there's a couple really important ones. One of them being, which we've already cleared, and it's up to 5,000 pools in the market for that. This gives you a lot of early Lord XP to boost that Lord level to get access to more talents. And the short version here is all you have to do is go into the market, you buy everything that's a purple gem, and then you go to your alchemy lab and you just disenchant everything that you just bought and this is a nice recycling process that allows for you to farm that growth mission talent which is really important of course there's other things like training which i believe we've already completed and that just is allows for you to just to non-stop train the way to always do this because you do have a training ground so your capacity is going to be limited right you can't build unlimited troops here which is fantastic you would go here to train and then you would click here in the top right where the skull is. This allows for you to dismiss troops. So once you get a full training grounds, you can dismiss the troop type that you may not be using in your primary march, or if it's up to two that you're not using, just depending on the troop types for the immortals that you have in your lineup. You would then dismiss a portion of your troops, and this allows for you to constantly keep training so you can eventually get that growth achievement, along with just taking advantage of others that you'll see here as well. Then we'll look at daily missions. Daily missions, you just want to make sure you're doing up to your 100 chest, and it's simple things, right, that you're just going to do on an average basis. Part of those being buying five items from the market, right, which kind of factors into what we talked about. But it's important to do because, again, at the max, right, you're going to get some green gems, you get the Philosopher's Stone, you get some gold, some market orders, and some speed ups. So it's really good to make sure you're doing this at least at those 100 points to get that final chest every day. Last, I think I've covered a lot, if not almost everything, but I will briefly touch here on Tower of Knowledge. Now, Tower of Knowledge is something that I'm going to say, or and I do also need to touch on Forge, uh, which is for your artifacts. And I know we have Arena. Uh, okay, here, let me touch on Arena real quick so I don't forget. So Arena here is the recommendation of when the season refreshes, this is a nice little tip, you're going to get these like PvE... AI matchups that will not be someone's name, but you'll notice there's a trend uh, to it. And this usually happens every time the season resets. When that happens, you want to always do the times three victory point challenges. You can do these up to five. They are free wins and they give you the most amount of points that you can get um, that will go to your and I can't even click this up here, but it would go towards your insignia marks, and then you can come in here to the shop, and this is also a place where you get the Wind Dragon Crystals. Um, you can invest these into some of your epics as well, uh, and these do rotate every season. So some of these that you'll see here in the shop will rotate, along with uh, the rewards that you get for end-of-season rewards right on some of the Immortals will swap. Now, there's five seasons. <clears throat> they all rotate, so once you get to five, it resets, and season six is season one, seven is two, so on and so forth. But this is just a nice little thing that you can take advantage of when seasons reset, and then you can use these insignias to also help you with other things from the insignia shop in Arena. Okay, now let's talk about the Forge. Now the Forge is where you're going to do things like artifacts, you're going to transmute, and I'm going to show you some examples here. Let me do the Forge, the general Forge first. So here when you get to the forge, oh gosh, never mind, it is in transmute. So for transmute, right, you're going to go here and you're going to see that you're, you're going to have like a minting rate. So for example, let's say that I wanted to, so if I go here, right, this is where you click on the right side. So there's two sides on the right side. This is where you would, if you need more gold, right, you would wait until you get your forge arguably at max level. Uh, or sorry, I should say once you get it to 36, that's when you get the best minting uh, uh, ratio proportions. But it's always good to try and wait to max level because that's when you get the biggest boost as well. So you would go here, excuse me, to transmute. And then you, again, this is only if you need more gold, right? And I would do this. You could see I can burn this much. I'm going to get that much gold. It's going to take me this amount of time, right? So my recommendation is really hold off on doing this until you at least get this building to 40 and then only when you need to. 
this is where you're going to use resources and you can see how much resources you actually have to use to kind of get the late game tier items right which is going to be for your epic artifacts you're really going to need to wait on this right this is one of the reasons why doing artifacts is something that's super late game you don't really do that right away you're going to wait a while and then again when you go in here to Oh gosh, this is why I always have to remember where I'm going. Forge, right? You're going to notice that you're going to have a few of these, right? So you have five different epic, uh, epic artifacts that you're going to use. You can see here you're going to get these materials there from the Forge. In addition, these are going to be your schematics, right? Epic schematics that you're going to get from a few different things, right? Throne of the Supreme, Battle of Asteria, Evernight Labyrinth. That's the fourth floor in, in Mysterium that we talked about. Some special bundles. And then there's going to be some chests, epic chests that you might be able to get as well, along with some free-to-play ways that they've put in to allow for you to farm these in addition. Now, artifacts are pretty extensive because they have two leveling systems once you get them they have a general level and then they kind of have a skill level i'm um, very similar to um, some of the different leveling options that you have with your immortals right so you can actually like skill these up more with stars and then also do uh, additional upgrades on them uh, with that being said now let's talk about tower of knowledge similar to this my opinion would be that you're, once you max your immortals out with everything you can do, you're eventually going to go into Tower of Knowledge. That's going to be number two. Then, once you get, because Tower of Knowledge is where you're going to be able to learn support or additional skills. These support and additional skills will be added on to your immortals. Right Now, you can see here in short, Epics will give you three additional uh, subslots. And then everyone below, from purple to blue to green, will give you two. Right, so again, that's why it's good to try and get as many epics in your main march and use those pr uh, primarily because you get up to three support skill options. Now, these support skills definitely will give you a huge power boost once you start adding these on to your uh, to your marches along uh, because you're also able to max level these out as well, <clears throat> which also is going to cost the purple shards. With that, this is why these are some things that again, again, because we're approaching this from a free to play perspective. If you are not spending money then this is something you should wait to do until late game. Focus on max leveling or uh, doing the skills for each of your immortals, right? In your, in, your, in your marches that you're using. Max out all of those first skills, and then you can dive into Tower of Knowledge. Once you then, you're probably going to spend a significant amount of time in Tower of Knowledge. Once you have, I would say, put skills on all four of your marches if not at bare minimum your primary march which you can always apply that universally as well on how you do things with your account if you just want to look at it like that then once you get your your primary march done with maxing their skills out then you can go over and start investing resources into and you may be able to do this early so let me put a small asterisk here because there are certain things you can do to farm these shards and these schematics as well Right, so you can definitely work on uh, artifacts while you're doing Tower of Knowledge. You can even work on getting just materials for these artifacts, right? Even from even once you get to level 15, uh, or Castle 15, I should say, which unlocks Mysterium, right? You can still do all of these things to start farming. Just bear in mind that the, these are some of the orders and when you really should start looking to do some of these things on, right? Depending on also the level of the artifacts that you want to do. Some people might just tell you, hey, just go for the purples and the elites, which that's fine. Um, I like to be more of a min-maxer where I'm just kind of focusing on, on late game stuff. So for me, I'm just going to do, you know, epics, even if it takes me however long. I would just rather spend my time and my resources getting things that are going to allow for me to get those specific items, or late game items, right, and no matter how long it takes, rather than using a portion or some of those resources to do the next tier or the tier below. Uh, but again, that's just my opinion on that. With that being said, I did not think I was going to be at 43 minutes for this video. There is a lot. I'm definitely going to put time cards here. I hope you guys enjoyed, As I'm, in addition to really wanting to believe I did a good job in covering as much as I possibly could, because there are some new things that have been added, um, especially since we last did our best practices video for all of Infinity Kingdom. With all of that now finally being said, a great resource is going on the official Infinity Kingdom Discord, which again, you can find that along with other links and necessary information and other resources in the description down below. That is it for me. I hope y'all enjoyed. I'm out. Until next time, we will catch y'all later.